want to say one thing about that because I mean, mm -hmm. I understand it can be overwhelming. There's a lot, but I mean, this is only happening once a year. <laughs> you can't miss out on it. You can't miss out on the chance. Take a bunch of notes, take some time after to organize it, to put it together and to implement it. But it's not like this is happening every month. Like this only comes around once a year. You can't afford not to be on the GoPro Recruiting Mastery. You can't afford not to for your business. Hey, Eric, one more thing to say on that. You're going to take a shit ton of notes. I mean, like a whole journal will get filled up. But let's just be real. The problem with network marketing is unrealistic expectations that are not met when a prospect becomes a distributor. They're sold on this big idea. I'm going to go out and become a millionaire. I'm going to get my whole life. And I, guess what? We're sending it right. We got to recalibrate expectations. So you're going to go to GoPro. You're going to hear amazing stuff from amazing speakers. You're going to get a whole journal. But what I would encourage you to do is find the one, two, or three things that you know that you can implement successfully in your business, where your business needs it, and just go implement one, two, or three things. One, two, or three big ideas in your business is worth tens of thousands to millions of dollars. And then once you've got those running on rails, go back to your journal and find one more you can implement and just go do one at a time. There's no reason for overwhelm unless you think you've got to take the entire three-day weekend and put it all on your first day when you get back home. Eric, I have to jump yeah, in. Pete, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Thanks for jumping actually, on this backstage. You actually have me working on something right now that people need to know about. Eric told you the four rocks today. Leadership, social media, actually the five. Leadership, social media, duplication, uh, presentation power, and personal breakthrough. And he said, Pete, I want to make sure that we get the execution plan. This is the execution. I am literally taking all of these notes of Eric Warries that seem overwhelming. And he's like, get the workbook done that when they leave virtual GoPro, they have a few pages of an execution plan. So guess what Brian said? Guess what Ann said? You're going to take a lot of notes, but the beauty is every session is going to be driving back to like a one page execution plan so that you actually leave with your own custom execution plan. Eric, I think that's such an important thing because it's what I've been working on all day yesterday and today uh, because you said that's critical. You don't want people just to leave with the journal of notes. You want them to leave with the game plan of what they're going to do when they leave that place. So I just have to say that, Eric, because I'm working on it today. So I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, Fraser, if I'm older and I don't want to put people my age in my demographic or avatar, where do I go from there to build my profile? Well, first and foremost, you're, if you're older, your demographic is, is, that is a very popular demographic on social media now. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. I always, I always learn, um, my dad always told me, he said, if you're not smart, recruit someone who's smart. If you're, if you're too old, recruit someone who's younger. Um, he just always told me that, but I believe, uh, if you're older, definitely go out there onto LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you got like TikTok is younger, Instagram's a little bit older, Facebook's a little bit older, uh, and LinkedIn is, is a little bit older than that. So go on there and find what you are comfortable sharing. Start, if, if maybe you've got kids, grandkids, and stuff like that, start posting that. Maybe you like knitting, start posting that. Maybe you love your dog or walking your dog, start posting that. You will find something that you love talking about. You will find people who are in similar category as you, and hey, maybe they've got kids who need an extra opportunity. Maybe they've got kids who want the product that you've got. Um, there are a lot of people who are using social media uh, and crushing it, even if they don't think they can. For example, my dad, 61 years old, he has multiple sclerosis. Uh, the only thing he can do is stay at home and touch a screen on a phone or touch a, a mouse on, on his computer. He has a million reasons why he shouldn't be posting. He has a million reasons why he, he couldn't be building a business, but he decides that he does because he knows that people out there like him and he can inspire them to be able to have something else um, going on in, his, in, in, in their lives as well. So I would, I would just find what, find what you love to post about even if you don't want to, because you, you really can make a difference by doing that. Awesome. Um, I want to jump to Sarah and Tony Zalecki. If you guys are, are you, are you guys there? Can you turn your camera on? Or unmute yourself? I'm putting you on the spot. Are you there? Can you see them or no? They're not on camera. Yeah, okay. Um, 
If they jump on, uh, San Antonio, if you jump on, let me know. Um, Brian, how much time would you suggest working on your business each day when you're a parent and have a full-time job? How do you ration it out? Um, here's the thing. We have to always remember that our struggle is the every person struggle. There are not that well, this year's a little different because some people got furloughed or they've been displaced. And so there are some people that have more free time now than they've ever had before. But that's going to, at some point, that's going to go back to normal. They're going to go back to their crazy, hectic, busy lives again, running kids around to soccer practices, running their career, you know, cooking dinner, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I was working 70 hours a week in real estate when I started really building this business. So I had to find slivers of time. And so, for example, we used to do PBRs, private business receptions, which is a home presentation. On the way to somebody's house, if I had a presentation booked that night at, at 7 o'clock at somebody's house, on the way there, and don't judge me because I would dial while I was driving, sometimes I'd wait till a stoplight or whatever, but I would make 30 minutes of phone calls on the way to my appointment and 30 minutes of calls on the way home from the appointment instead of listening to the radio. So, I, you, you, look, if you want something better, look, we put a man on the moon in 1969. Uh, an adult human being can find time to make a phone call or to do a follow-up. Everything else is only excuses. It just means that your level of priority and motivation to go build this business is just not high enough. It, if it's high enough, while you're doing your snow angel, you'll have your earpiece in and you'll be on the phone while you're on the floor. Got it. Um, I see uh, San Antonio here. Yeah. Uh, people were asking, um, what tips do you have for people who are want to build a business as a couple? <laughs> Where do we start? Oh, um, I think it's something I, I, we love building together. I think it's, we've had to really work on falling in love with each other's differences and learning how to make sure that one doesn't uh, overshine the other. Uh, I think it's kind of a, it's a very fine line. Um, I think too, it's people always ask about, you know, figuring out your role in the business. Um, you know, I think for some people, you know, each, you know, there's things that Tony's really good at that I'm not great at and vice versa. But what's really cool about working together as a couple is that the things that I wasn't good at and he was, it's, it's rubbed off on me or I've gotten better, right? Cause I've been in that environment of being with him. I mean, we've worked together now, what, 16 years? Yep. And um, I mean, Eric, you know, in the beginning it, it was rough, but we also had to make a decision that we were gonna figure out how to work together or we weren't, hmm. <laughs> and, right? And we had to make sure that we had the same vision that we were on the same page. I think, you know, because for a while we weren't on the same page. Yeah, and I'll say, and, and this is, huge this was the defining moment for me because we're both type a personalities and you know we can go at the same speed and i had to learn to step back and let sarah shine and let her do her thing and not try to like hog the spotlight so to speak all the time and i had to let her step into her own and not just forget about her and i'm just doing my thing and you know when i learned that piece and when I learned how to um, really work side by side that way, Eric, I mean, our business tripled and our relationship got 10 times better, not only in business, but our marriage and people seen that and people on our team noticed that. And, you know, they came up to us and just said, wow, you really figured that out, Tony. Like, man, proud of you, dude. Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, 